YouTubers. Um, today is January 1st and I thought I would do a video and take a break from doing singular oils and stuff like that about January 1st and maybe some projects or some things that we could at least look at and and think about maybe implementing um, for the new year. So <clears throat> the first thing is get yourself a calendar that will uh, show you the lunar phases each day. So you want you know a calendar that's going to show you you know all the phases of the moon and this is the witch's calendar of 2019 that I got for Christmas and I'll see if I can hold this up for you. These are the different pictures of the pages and the front looks like this. And it'll help you kind of, you know, if, especially if you're busy and you work full time or you have small children that you're raising, anything, you know, people's lives get busy. You'll have to excuse me for being really pluggy. Um, I also got sick for being around the grandbabies over the holidays because my immune system isn't built up any longer because um, I don't raise little ones anymore. So a calendar is a good thing to do to write down you know, in the morning at this time, if you have to be to work, let's say by seven, then you might want to get up around 5.30, maybe six o'clock in the morning. And let's just say, um, oh, maybe something that you want to start implementing into your, you know, new year, um, you know, just to have some witchiness each day in your life. Let me grab some tarot cards that I got for Christmas. I got several, but I'm just going to show you one tonight. And that is these. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I got those on Amazon. They're the Gilded Reverie Lenormand Cairo Marchetti's Expanded Edition. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. I, I love these. I am really fond of gilded uh, tarot cards. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I'll see if I can bring this up. So maybe you might want to implement doing tarot cards. Here's the book that comes with it. It's a little, let's see if I can open it. It's a little book that, you know, explains everything about the cards. And now I'll show you some of the cards. They're absolutely gorgeous. Oops, this one got bent. That's so sad. That sucks. Maybe I can bend it back flat, I hope. I'll put that one down here to work on. So this is what all the cards look like on one side. Okay. And then they're gilded, by the way. This is gold gild on the sides, all four sides. So you've got an anchor. Tree of Life. This is Time. The Hour, or the Magnifying Glass. The Doggy. I believe this is uh, the Garden. These are owls. You hear my dogs in the background as usual. Come on, you guys, stop. Be good, please. Thank you. Be good puppies. Thank you. Here's the letter. If I can get it to focus. And so I'm not going to show you the whole deck. That would take too long in this video, but these are beautiful cards. I just love them. <clears throat> And with this particular tarot deck, um, you can buy charms for each card, kind of like throwing the bones, or you can use it in your throwing of the bones um, that you're collecting. You know, you can you can buy starter kits for throwing bones if you wish, but I'm just going to take the next year and I'm going to collect different things that I find or come across. Um, 
to match each card in this tarot deck and that means something to me because if it doesn't mean and resonate with me the meaning I'm not going to remember what all the pieces mean and I'm going to stumble and stutter and hesitate and try to remember thinking they're you know throwing it down and going oh man in my head I'm going to be thinking what does that mean again so if I get each piece collected and it resonates with me, that will help me, I think, remember, you know, when I'm throwing the bones for somebody and doing a reading, what each piece means and signifies. So the next topic for the new year of something that you might want to implement into your daily routine, and you can either do it in the morning, early in the morning before work, or you could do it maybe before bed, after you've bathed or showered, and it's coming to the end of your day. Um, no, you guys, stop. Go, Sash. No. Is journaling, shadow work. You could, you know, do shadow work or you could just journal. It could be a dream journal. It could be a shadow work journal. Um, it could be, you know, just different things that you found coincidental, but if you really don't believe in coincidences, you know, you might want to jot them down because they might not make sense at the moment but they will eventually. Oh, they were fighting over a tennis ball. So the first journal I made by hand, it did get somewhat damaged when I moved here um, a little, just, a, just a tad over a year ago. And this journal I use for my shadow work. To me, elephants represent strength through diversity, diversity, sorry. And as you can see, this is all handmade out of clay. And I attached it to just a plain journal that I believe I bought at Walmart. And as you can see, it's just a plain journal. And one of the ears on my elephant got damaged in my move. It's over here. And this is uh, cracked. There was part of a leaf here if you can see that and part of the ear over here is damaged so but I made that by hand and I painted all of this and the entire let me see if I can hold it back here so you can see more of the entire book this is what I use for my shadow work and for working on things from child from having a really bad childhood and you know just different things that I've gone through in my life and trying to work through everything so that's that journal I made. And a more recent journal that I've made that I'm going to be using this year is as I'm working on my shadow work, this is Medusa. And snakes represent transformation, change. And so as I'm working in the elephant journal that I showed you earlier just a minute ago this one through all the shadow muck you know of the past and the experiences that were negative or hurtful or tragic this one I'm gonna keep track of like my accomplishments and goals and things of that nature things that you know I want to continue to work on and plans to get there and so that's what this journal represents that I made by hand see if I can hold it up here so you know I did all this by hand with clay paint rope glue baking and it took quite a while but these are the only two that I have done so far and some of the books that I got for Christmas this year are the green witchcraft the manual part three purchase that on Amazon very good book. This book, I would buy one, two, and three. And something that, if you're new to uh, witchcraft or conjure work, I'm more of a conjure worker. Um, I would class the conjure is made intertwined and off in th of the Bible. And since I believe in one God and I don't have deities and all that. I do a lot more conjure work, I would say, more than classifying myself as a witch. I would just say that I'm a conjure root worker. Um, 
So, you know, for Christmas and things, I realize in the Wichita community, in the Wiccan community, you, you know, you refer to it as Yule and all that. And I'm not saying that I won't refer to it on videos for those of you that are, but you're going to hear me call things Christmas, Easter, because I believe in God, one God. So that's what I base my practice off of. All of us do something different. That's what's so interesting. I belong to a gazillion witchy channels that I've subscribed to. <clears throat> and it's just, it's interesting to see how different people implement uh, their practice or their work, you know, in their own ways that work for themselves. One which might burn the edges of, you know, some light tan paper for labels on their herb jars and stuff to make them look more witchier. Another one might use an actual, no, Sashi, an actual label maker. Um, another witch might just hand write them on a piece of paper and tape them on the outside of the jar or use stickers, you know, that have self sticky on the back. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Everybody gets to implement their own style and what works for them. What works for me in my life doesn't mean doing everything the way that I do it is going to work for you in your life because your life isn't my life and we don't walk in each other's shoes. Um, I do have herb jars that, you know, I have all burnt around the edges of the tags and then, you know, I have the, the herb written on it and, you know, I have that asphyxiated to the jars and I've done that with a lot of my uh, herbs, but I just got to the point where it's like I've got so many herbs and so many different tools and and different things that I use for my practice for my workings. I, I call it more of a I'm a worker, conjure worker, that I just got to the point where it's like I have to start finding more easier, quicker ways to have things organized that work for my life. So I use a labor a labeler. Okay, so another book, back to the topic at hand, is a book that's called Moon Spells. How to Use the Phases of the Moon to Get What You Want by Diane Alquist. This was purchased also on Amazon, and this is what this book looks like. That's a very great book. You would be very pleased if you purchased, you had the money just for one moon phase slash spell ritual book. This is it. Then I purchased... Llewellyn's 2019 Witch's Companion, A Guide to Contemporary Living. And I got that for Christmas as well. I love this book too. Um, it looks like this. Got that on Amazon as well. Very good book. Worth your money. So this isn't going to be a super long video tonight because I'm sick and I'm all congested and my head's all packed. Um... I just wanted to kind of jump on here and just say, you know, when you get up in the mornings, let's say you have to be to work at 7 or, or, or 8 o'clock in the morning, let's just say, you might want to wake up at 6.30 or 7, you know, make your tea or make your coffee or, you know, whatever your normal morning ritual is, maybe go into your little witchy space, or if you happen to be lucky enough to live in a state that doesn't suffer from winters and, you know, 20 below zero and all that, then if you have temperate weather that are in the 50s in the winter. Go out on your front porch, watch the morning sunrise, listen to the birds sing, um, take your journal not only first thing in the morning, but I also like to journal at the end of the day. What my day was like, the people that I interacted with during the day, you know, were they positive experiences, were, were they negative experiences, did other people just seem to be like in a really bad mood and just overly sensitive and super touchy and taking things the wrong way and everything just seemed like a struggle that day with you know outside elements and people you know or was it a good day and you know maybe somebody said something that was complimentary to you um or whatever, you know, when you were at work or on your way to work or if you were out shopping or running errands or getting groceries at the market or whatever the case is, you know, just kind of, I journal before I go to bed at the end of the day 
when the house is quiet, except for the dogs, they're never quiet. Sorry about that too, if that irritates anybody of my viewers. I love my dogs, they're my babies, but you know, they're constantly, they're constantly making sounds and growling and fighting with each other. Aren't ya? You know, boo. So, I hope 2019 is a fantastic year for all my watchers and uh, you be safe and be the best person that you can be. You know, there's so many people in this world that are so hateful, so negative. They just go around causing nothing but pain and havoc in life. Don't be one of those people, you know. Be somebody that makes another person feel good, you know. All right. I'll see you next video. You have a great new year, everybody. Be safe, like I said, and I'll see you soon. Blessed be.